All right, Jill Mott, thought I'd have you on here. We're going to talk a little bit about the balls. Uh, did a little uh, video earlier on Hen and Hooker where I thought he would go. And of course, Mel Kuyper was throwing some shade at him, <laughs> which is what Mel Kuyper does. And I was talking about how <laughs> Mel Kuyper was the guy that thought Jamarcus Russell was going to be a top five quarterback in the NFL. And, and he was also the guy that uh, thought Ryan Leaf should be picked possibly over uh, Peyton Manning. Yeah. Uh, two, of, two of the biggest butts of all time. The, Not the, just, the top two. Yeah, the top two. And he, uh, it, it'd be a struggle to pick number one out of the two yeah. guys. But, yeah, those those guys are just throwing darts at a board. That's, they don't know. That's, that's the exact term I use, darts at a board. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that's all, that's all they're doing. They're just making educated guesses, and sometimes you wonder about the educated part. Let's. Uh, I, I see him going mid, in the mid middle of the first round, possibly a little late in the first round because of his injury. I yeah, late first that's... round. I think late first round would be ideal for him because he would be on a better team as probably in a backup role, and he, that would give him time to learn the NFL game if and he recover. gets. Yeah, and if he gets – that's the only problem. The worst thing can happen to you almost is being the number one drafted quarterback because you're going to get on the worst team with the worst offensive line, and the last three guys to do that have gotten on the crappiest teams and they end up having blown out their knees and having to sit out a year before they finally start building some around them like Joe Burrow and several others. Yeah, yeah, he needs some time to recover and learn the system. Too early in the first round with that injury, there's going to be too yeah. much pressure on him to get on the field at some point. And yeah, I, I agree. Think that's best for him. He needs to get comfortable with his knee, get it back 100%. And the nice thing is with ACLs now, you can come yeah. back 100% and be fine. And we've seen yeah, that that's, many, many guys. Joe Burrow is a prime example. You know, we were talking, I was talking about that with uh, my son the other day. The fans don't know this, but our father was an orthopedic surgeon and he used to do knee surgeries. And back when he started doing it, you blew out your knee, you were done. Yep. And now I'm sure he'd be shocked. And that's only been in the last decade or two. Well, actually, he, he actually did several guys that, that got better and were able to get back yeah. out on the field back in the day. Well, he got so they started uh, you know, doing they the arthroscopic made... surgery. Yeah, during during his career, they came out with the arthroscopic surgery and there was more improvements. But even since then, since he passed 15 years ago, I mean, it's it's not that big a deal. It's just uh, it's you're probably going to have a year off, but you can come back just as good, which is really shocking because uh, that used to you were never quite the same. Yeah, yeah, that, there's a lot of truth in that. But yeah, uh, yeah I think he'll be fine on that. It's a uh, I'm hearing a, a lot of good things from the spring uh, practice as well. We talked about him in there, but uh, yeah, I'm hearing a lot of good things about Dante Thornton in the uh, spring saying that he's just a matchup nightmare for him. And his height, speed, and ability to catch the ball. You know, this, he was a top 50 big time recruit when he went to Oregon. Yeah. And now he's at UT and look, he's a year older and stronger. He could be a real difficult guy to deal with if you've got him on the outside and then you've got Squirrel White at the slot, and then you've got Brew McCoy, who's a beast, uh, sitting well, there. Ready. I mean, that, that's an absolute wide receiver crew that could just tear up Jack. Yeah, the uh, defensive coordinators are going to be up late at night next year. Uh, Squirrel White, from what I've heard uh, from spring practice, looks like Tariq Hill. He's always open. He's yeah. just quietly always open because he's outrunning everybody. He's so fast. And he's got great hands, and he runs good routes, and he's going to be fantastic this year. A combination of him, then you've got Brew McCoy, who's like another matchup nightmare because he's a giant. And now we've got Dante Thornton, and there's probably some others that we're not mentioning. We've become wide receiver you again. Yeah, so th that's looking good. I know our linebacker crew is definitely looking good, but I'm hearing a lot of good things about the secondary as well. Uh, some of these yeah, guys, good. this Gabe Judy Lolly, I think is uh, showing out pretty well. We've got these freshmen coming in uh, that really could be helpful. I don't know how much playing time they'll get, but I tell you what, it helps your depth tremendously when you bring in those talented guys. But they oh, also yeah. do one other very important thing. They push the other guys. It's like, look, if that's... you don't get the job done, there's a guy right over here that's a high four-star waiting to get your spot. Exactly. And, uh, yeah, when somebody's breathing down your neck, you just play that much harder. Yep, I'm thinking, I'm hearing a lot of good things about Ricky Gibson, then also Jordan Matthews. Those two guys, 
And, you know, this uh, Christian Conyer out of Kentucky is a heck of an athlete. Now, I don't know if he's going to yeah. really go early on, but between those guys, that Ricky Gibson runs a 4 4 Matthews was a big-time get. Out of, I believe he was yeah. out of Louisiana. So yeah. we're going to be in good shape in the secondary long term. It may be a little bit rough at times this year, but it's going to be a – I think we'll see a nice improvement over last Let's, year because we're going to have depth. That's it. And if we could just improve a little in the in the defensive backfield from last year, it's a major improvement because our our defensive backfield was our, our biggest liability last year. Yeah, it was terrible. We finished 129th there. We were 39th overall in scoring, but 129th in pass uh, uh, receiving against, and that's that's what killed us. Our defense yeah, get, line improved dramatically. Yeah, and uh, the defensive line was really good. We were great against the run last year. That we, Actually, we, were, we were rock solid against the run. We yeah. had given up a little over 100 yards, which is in the SEC is not bad, especially as much as they were out there. But they no, that, instead of running that, the ball, they realized they could throw on us. And that's, in, that's playing LSU away. That's playing Alabama. That's playing Georgia. And you average like that, that's really good. So hopefully that continues. Offensive line, I haven't heard much of that. I've seen some names that I didn't recognize, but I think there's a, we're in pretty good shape there. We've lost we lost some really good players on the offensive line. I think there's some guys going to step in. We got still got the Maze kid coming back. A couple of others, I think. Is that I, well? You I got a couple of big. You got a couple of big time transfers in Curry, yes. Texas, and then you've got the uh, guy to Miami. Both of which should be plug and play guys because they both played a ton of ball. That'll be helpful, but you, yeah, it's not going to be easy to replace a first round draft pick. That was the one disappointment in this year's recruiting class was offensive line. You know, we missed out on that Francis M guy out of Hawaii, which we should have gotten, but Miami overpaid him, freaked us. We we should have picked him up. We need in 2024 to pick up some big time offensive linemen, and we're and in, I'm sure we're, we're in on several, but we got to start landing. Well, that's it. But uh, I swear, Heupel has done a great job in that staff of filling uh, areas of need. Big well, time. The, the defense was killing us. And yeah. they, they had a great recruiting class last year for defense. The defensive line, those three edge rushers they got, Caleb Herring, Chandavian, and then also uh, David Hobbs, those three guys I think could be real players long term. Who was the kid from BYU, the transfer? Peely. Okay, yeah. Peely is going to be fine. Peely's going to yeah. be a leader on that defensive squad. Now yeah. he's not as he's not as fast as Banks was, but he's probably going to be just as good on the run. And the other thing yeah. is his leadership quality. This is a mature guy. Yeah, you know, you're not going to have he's not going to get into a battle with Hendon Hooker right before the South Carolina game. That won't no. happen. Hopefully, no, that will not happen. I promise no. you. that Peely guy is a, a legitimate mature dude, and he's not going to be like that. Yeah, we had we picked up some really good transfers. That was that was good to see too. That's what it seemed like uh, that Coach Heupel went for. He didn't go after the five stars that could be problematic, like the ones out of Texas A and M. He yeah. seemed to get guys that were that would fit the culture and could actually help the team, not necessarily the flashy guys. And we've had several recruits, and I guess probably every team gets some of these, but we've had several recruits that were just 100%, I want to be here, 100%. It was not even close. And those are the kind of guys you want who are dying to be here. Yeah, I and think I think that's why, we've, and that's why we've done so well at getting uh, receivers and transfer guys. Uh, they want to come play for Heupel. Yeah, he's, he's, he's the, definitely improved the culture dramatically, and he's not oh, allowing – He's not allowing any problems, any problem uh, players to come onto the team, especially transfers. You know, Agreed. sometimes with freshmen, you don't know if he's 17, 18 years old. But when you bring in a transfer, you're going to know if that guy's been a problem. So, oh, yeah. Else, because there's no way somebody's been somewhere for two or three years and not had a problem. You would know. Yeah, everybody, somebody would tell you and somebody would talk. Yeah, we've, we've done that. Uh, I've been extremely pleased with our uh, recruiting. We, pick, we If we could pick up another four or five star along the way, I think we'd maybe get into the top five. If we do that, we're gold. I think we're going to be in the top five in 2024 because remember last year, we were uh, we were coming off seven and six, and we started out getting a bunch of three stars right off the bat. This year, yeah. we're starting off getting four stars, and we're in on a ton of five stars that yeah. are legitimately looking at us because we just finished 11 and two. And finish well, six in the country, especially offensive. I mean, you want you want to come to uh, play for the quarterback whisperer. You want to go to Top Gun. 
dude, I, when it comes to Top Gun and Miramar, we are going to be picking what quarterbacks we want from now on. Yeah. First yeah. of all, picking up a Merklinger was great the, the yes. year after having a five-star uh, Nico yeah, show Nico. up. And we're going to be picking between George McIntyre, who's a five-star out of Tennessee, which would be yeah. a fantastic pickup for us, uh, the fella out of Kentucky, Cutter Bowley, who is a very good high four-star, almost five-star. He's yeah. They've both been to Knoxville like half a dozen times each. And yeah. then there's a couple other that. quarterbacks that are very interested – I think we're going to be drafting, not recruiting a quarterback. Yeah, I, we're I agree. Pick. Yeah, we're yeah. going to pick who we want. Yeah, that's uh, and man, that's such a good space to be. That's that's where Alabama and Georgia have been for years. Alabama and, drafts; they don't recruit; they draft. Yeah, and that no, stinks <laughs> for us. They said, "Okay, uh, we'll go after him, and he'll probably come because yeah. it's us." <laughs> you know. And uh, I think that's where into that point with with Heupel and his staff, these uh, offensive minded kids, the wide receivers, the running backs, especially the quarterbacks, they want to play. They've seen the stats that you show on on your show here all the time. Any, anywhere he's been, he's turned their quarterbacks into all Americans. One of the reasons that I put those stats up there, Chilmont, is that I know for a fact those high school kids watch these type of shows. Oh, and yeah. I want them to see proof positive of if you want to be a star, you'd better get in a program that creates stars. Don't yeah. go to some program that's going to be old school and it's going to be three yards in a cloud of dust and you're going to be lost in the shuffle. Go to a school that has a tremendous offense that's going to showcase your skills and make you look the best you can look. Look what it's done for Hendon Hooker, Jalen Hyatt, Cedric Tillman, on and on and on. These guys are going to be making tens of millions of dollars because they were in this offense. Do you think Cedric Tillman and Jalen Hyatt would have reached anywhere near these heights had they not been brought into the proper system, been developed, which is what the guy does, and their confidence built up? Because Hendon Hooker's confidence is through the roof. Of That's course. huge for an athlete. That's huge. Especially for a quarterback. Quarterbacks got to have major confidence. Oh, your confidence level as a quarterback is probably the most important skill and talent you have because you've got to believe what you're doing, and that offense builds confidence, and then you become a better player than you ever thought you could be. And I've, I mean, you've seen it over and over. And these oh, guys yeah. are going to get paid big time Benjamins because of it. Yeah, oh, I agree. And look at Joe Milton. Oh, man, that's a prime example. That guy just needs confidence. That's what he needs. And he showed been, it in the Clemson game. If he's ever 180'd anybody, it's been it's been him. Well, you know, we talked about it at length uh, going into the show, the Orange Bowl last year. I, you, neither one of, none of us had any real confidence in him. And then all of a sudden, he'd been working like crazy all year and – Still and being right there with Hendon Hooker and the quarterback coaches all the time, yeah. and he stepped in and and like I said, when the when the lights were brightest, when the pressure was highest, he really performed. How good he does this year, still don't know. And uh, you know, I think the jury's still out a little bit. If he comes in and does, plays well from the get go, the sky's the limit. Well, he's a guy that in practice they said he's unbelievable. Yeah. Then he'd get in the game and he was overthrowing. That's all confidence, every bit of that. Exactly. Obviously, Heupel has worked hard with him and improved his confidence level because you don't go out there and throw three touchdown strikes the way he did under that level of pressure unless you're confident. So yeah, national that's what Heupel, Heupel builds confidence. And that, that's in the receiving crew, that's quarterback, that's all the players out there. Our team plays – at a different level than they did two years ago. Completely different level mentally yeah. and physically. Yeah, it's night and day. And, and they're not better physically. That team at, that we saw last year is not dramatically better physically than they were even under Jeremy Pruitt. Yeah. But the difference is their mindset. They know they're good. They know they're going to win. And they, they know they're never out of it. And that that's, why Alabama, that's why Alabama is so hard to beat. Even when they lose, it's almost like you've got to have some sort of last-second thing because yeah. they know how good they are. They are first yeah. of all, they're really good, but they know they're good. Well, that confidence, knowing that you've got such good players, you you got that great quarterback. It's like you're you're always calm because you you're not 
you're not hyped up because, oh my gosh, we got a score here or we're gonna, we're not going to last the rest of this game. No, with Hendon Hooker and hopefully with uh, Joe Milton, you know, that confidence is, okay, we can strike at any time. We're never out of it. So everybody be calm and do your job. And that's what happens. And then the next thing you know, we're in the end zone. Well, and, by, and behind Joe Milton, you've got the number one recruit in the country, Nico, and he is lighting it up in practice. There, look, Josh Heupel said he's the most talented quarterback athlete he has ever seen. And this is a guy that finished second in the Heisman, won a national title, and has been coaching for years. And he said he's the most talented. And uh, that's an unbelievable compliment coming from him. Absolutely. This is a guy that knows. I'm telling you, he's he's bringing in a new level. And, and he's got a new alignment for the red zone that nobody's allowed to see or, or recruit or record. And he had oh, everybody yeah. cut off their recording devices. So we're yeah. going to see a new wrinkle in the red zone that no coach is ready for. And I wonder when he's going to pull it out. I'm, probably, I'm getting... probably against Florida, if I had to that's... guess. That's exactly what I was going to say at Florida because we got to go to Gainesville this year. Yeah, we'll get a touchdown or two out of that that nobody's expecting because somebody will wind up wide open in the end zone and they're going to be going, where did that guy come from? And it's some yeah. wrinkle he's setting in that he's done. You remember that time where he set up a Hyatt behind the offensive line and he was oh, squatting yeah. down? And the next thing you know, he was 30 yards down the field and there wasn't anybody within 10 yards of him. And that's the kind of stuff – that uh, Heupel does that can change the whole game, can can change everything. Oh, and it just destroys it destroys the morale of the other team too. Oh, it does, like, it does. It frustrates them to no end because then they're they're befuddled. Yeah, and it changes the uh, momentum. I mean, last year it's uh, after the game, the Alabama game, they showed <laughs> Saban a couple of times on the sideline, just absolutely flipping, you losing it. And I just remember oh, saying, yeah. "Well, that's so beautiful." Yeah, because yeah, he couldn't. They couldn't figure it out. And uh, now we've got Kirby Smart's mad about our offense. We've had we've had Nick Saban trying to change the rules. We've had uh, Coach Scaraduzzi out of Pittsburgh wanting to change the rules. We've got Dabo's going to copy it, which I call which I call uh, jokingly mimic the gimmick. Yeah. And now mimic we've got Kirby Smart, who's won two national titles, and he's sitting there doing the same thing, crying about our offense, saying. What his offense is for, you know, real quarterbacks, and what we do is, you know, a bunch of crap, basically. Yeah, that's like it's like it's like, it's like Shooter McGavin trying to swing like Happy Gilmore. That's it. That's, that's it. it. <laughs> it's Shooter McGavin. That's what it is. They're trying to hit the driver. <laughs> yeah, he's trying to hit the driver like a hockey player. Oh yeah, that just came to me. <laughs> that's that's, part, that's, that's the absolute perfect way to ex describe it. And then he kicks it in disgust. Kicks the ball in disgust when he keeps missing it. Yeah. All right. Also, I want to talk about um, uh, Wilton and I went down to Florida and played with my brother, uh, Junebug, who's been on the show many times. And Walt, you know, I never thought I, I need to tell people, Walt gives lessons. He's a master professional out at uh, Fairways and Greens. Oh, yeah. And he gives he's lessons and, he, and he's got the whole setup out there. They've got that top tracer technology. He's got the computer that will sit there and, and go through your swing. And it's it's really amazing, the technology. He's helped my game out tremendously and yours. But yeah. they also will fit you for clubs because even, you know, a guy that played at my level had the wrong clubs. This was several years ago, and he refitted me. And actually, I've got the clubs here. He put me into these uh, new pings. Well, oh yeah, I don't know if – it's hard to see on this. Yeah. But the big thing that he did with this club was I'm tall with short arms. And I'm using clubs now that are two inches over standard, oversized grip, yeah. and uh, put the proper loft for me. And I picked up 10 yards on my irons, literally 10 yards and 20 yards off the tee. With the driver yeah. that I'm using, same thing. And I'm using the uh, – and it's actually – he's getting ready to get me another driver because this one's getting a few years old. Let's see. I'm using, I'm using the G30 is what yeah. I've got, two inches over standard, oversized grip. And I'm getting ready to go to another one here pretty soon. Uh, yeah. But And he's done the same thing for Wilmot, picked up, what, 10 or 15 yards just, uh, what, a month ago. Yeah, I, uh, you know, uh, this was probably oh, about a year ago when I got, I went to see him and I got fitted for clubs. And uh, pretty much the same thing as you. He went, I went an inch over standard length and I, I went with the G410s here, the irons. 
I immediately picked up a whole club length on all my irons. I went from like a, a seven iron to an eight iron, where I normally had a seven iron, I hit an eight iron now. Yeah, and, you were hitting uh, your irons a lot longer down there in Florida with la last and, month. And a lot straighter. I mean, uh, last time we played, I almost had a hole in one on that par three, and they're so much better. The technology is so much better now, the, the newer it is. technology. It's, it's shocking. He went. We went with uh, the 410 driver also. This was just the other day. He was. It's funny how these work now. The technology, they can interchange uh, shafts with just a, a click. And he had this head on a, a different shaft and had the computer there. And he said, no, this is not working right. You're, you're, it's generating too much spin and you're not getting enough distance because of that. And he changed the, the shaft. And all of a sudden I started crushing it. I gained like 10 to 15 yards if I catch it. Yeah, you were and, hitting the ball longer for sure off the tee because I could tell yeah. the difference. And you, you could tell just from the sound. Where I'm hitting it. And yeah. then I, I tried that new uh, – he brought me that new head, but the shaft that he had wasn't right for me. So I've got to go yeah. out and uh, and try several different shafts until I get it, one that fits my swing. And that's it. And it's surprising what a difference it makes because I, I could tell I wasn't hitting it any better than my old driver. Changed the shaft, and it's like, whoa, what was that? And he said, yeah, that was a lot better. The spin was a lot less. You got a lot more distance. I went from, you know, hitting it like 210 to uh, or 220 to like 230 yeah. when I caught it. It definitely makes a difference, it, it, yeah. without question. And yeah, he's good I at it. it. I mean, he's, he's my brother, and he's a punk, but <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's good at it. He, he, he knows what he's doing. Yeah, but he's very good. He's good at giving lessons. He's helped my game dramatically. Oh, yeah. No he did doubt. that too. Yeah. And that was that was the other thing. I was I was so open and I didn't oh, realize Oh man, you that. were yeah, you're you're was, I, that was the big difference that for me, I was open. I had the club face. I don't even know if I can this will show. Yeah, I have to put it in front of your face to see yeah, yeah, there it shows. I was open at address and he squared me up. Oh boy. That I know, changed and it my iron plate so dramatically. Yeah, he he had me close it and no more, more, more. I said, oh, my gosh, this feels awful. Yeah. But I kept doing it, and now I hit them dead straight. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it makes a, it makes a huge difference. Plus, you hit the ball yeah. longer, too. And you, oh, yeah. trap the, you trap the ball, and it just comes off there like a little missile instead of coming yeah. out of there. You were hitting those those straight-up little yes uh, butterfly shots with yeah. a four-iron, and that's no good. Now when you hit that five-iron, it just it's popping off there like it's supposed to. Yeah. He's helped me a ton. 